Okay, so hi everyone. Here is the interview and here's Ate Ika. Ate Ika, could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Ika. Uh, since this is about book clubs, I have I run the Makati Book Club with a friend, but I also regularly join the BGC Book Club, where I started from. And also this other online book club I just started during the pandemic. You know, the more the merrier. It's so lonely. <laughs> Oh, that's so. Uh, it does. So what else am I gonna do? I can't go to bars anymore. True, true. I also prefer book clubs over that. Actually, I could. I could do it both. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, what else can I say about myself? Uh, I. You well. Like it comes to like ever since I joined book club, my taste have really expanded. So before that, it was just mostly historical fictions, and as of maybe like last year and then this year, I've been reading more nonfiction's book of essay books and all that. Really expands your horizons in social circles. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, anyways, um. Is it hard to like balance three book clubs at a time? If the book's not the real problem, really is just to if you don't like the book or not. Oh yeah, like the one in BGC. Like, or, like you have to prioritize which books you want to read, which ones you don't. So sometimes you just have to miss it if you haven't read, read it, unless. You're the type to sit in without having read it, which is fine too. You don't have, not everyone has to just join in. You can also just, especially now, you can just listen in. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, okay, so for the first question, what do you think of book clubs in the Philippines? Clubs. You'd think they'd be easier to find. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the problem. They're kind of hard to find. Forming them is also... We know, like, a lot of people, you know, would read books, or at least they used to read books, but it's the hard part is, like, setting aside time, and for not just reading, also for meeting up in a place. I mean, the place doesn't matter so much now, but, you know, still. But in general, the people I've met in book clubs have been really great. For my book club, a lot of them are friends I just kind of dragged into it, but we're forced to bond, and that's great. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, when did you start joining a book club and how did things change over time? The first time I joined, oh, okay, my first one, I had some sort of like, I had this friend from high school, she moved to Canada, but she's like the one, I, she's the person who like consistently talk, we talk to each other about books, so I kind of, we are we are own we are our own little club in a sense. Okay, we had a third friend, but she said she'd join, but she never actually reads the books. But we did watch movies together with her, so it's okay. So that was like my only that was my own mini book club until October twenty eighteen. So that's like two years ago. Uh, that's when I joined the BGC book club on the Meetup app. It was like it's headed by Katrina, and we did we read Handmaid's Tale, which I've already read before. That first experience, like, it's, I didn't read, like, just from that first time, there's already, like, so many different opinions I'm exposed to. They didn't love The Handmaid's Tale, and that was shocking to me. <laughs> and I could see all the reasons now why it's not the best book ever, or it's not the best dystopian ever, but still, you know, you have to get used to those kind of opinions now about books you loved. Yeah, true. Right? Some, sometimes I'm cautious about feeling things about books now. So there's this one book we read. Uh, so we did Memory Palace. Like, I forget if it was this year or last year. We did the Memory, not, no, not Memory, the Memory Police by Yuko something. Sorry, I forget the name. <laughs> this is a Japanese book, a little bit under, under the radar. So when we did it for the Makati Book Club, so I just felt, it's okay, it's a good book, it's a good dystopian book. But then everyone in the Hathi Book Club seemed to really like it. And then it got picked for the, I don't know what to call that a book club. UP Book Club? Monica Book Club. 
It's run by a person named Monica, and they're all from UP, and I just joined in. Whoa. I don't know what to call that group. <laughs> How do you find that? Yeah, they... Ah, that one. So, Monica's sister is one of the close friends of my sister. So, they just told me to join. They told me about it, and I'm like, okay, why not? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, so you really need, like, so, friends and stuff to, like, find them? I guess. Yeah. So the me- yeah. So the memory police was everyone loved it. The Hardy Book Club, but when you got to that one, they hate all of them. Hated it. It was their lowest rated book. I don't get. You know, just different kind of groups. <laughs> so what's it like in a book club here in real life compared to like how it's like when we're in an online setting during the pandemic? So in pre-pandemic, you know, when we could go outside, it was always set in a restaurant in like middle of the week, weekday. You were never there, right? Yeah, I was there, but I wanted to, but I was so nervous. <laughs> I was nervous the first few times. They just kind of get used to them as buddies. But would you be able to attend that since you're in a student schedule? Would you be able to go on, like, uh, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I've been a a student athlete back then, so I'm pretty much used to sleeping late and all. Oh, cool. And you're there okay with you? Okay, so the places we go to in BGC, I will say it's a a time to treat yourself, because I honestly think the restaurants are pricey, and you always have to get a nice cocktail a long time with with, with your fancy meal. Oh, it's just like a, it's just it's just a nice it's just a good time to go out and like feel like you're very very social. Mm-hmm. Not you like the book or not. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope to meet you in person one day. Me too. I just wanna like learn how to draw things and ideas out of a book like the way you guys do, cause like. I don't know how, like, you guys notice that and stuff. So I'm like, whoa, okay. It's like I'm talking to living spark notes <laughs> every time I'm in a book club. I think you just get used to it. Like, over time, someone has someone brings up a point like that, and then you start noticing the patterns in other books. Yeah. I heard they, I heard they read a lot of Jane Austen. According, I think when my friend went to LaSalle for that, Years ago. Wow, that is so cool. Next question is What is your best experience in a Filipino book club? So, this actually just happened yesterday. Whoa. I mean, I ha- I'll, I'll give you the second best because that was fun too. But what, this happened yesterday when, uh, so we were reading, we were at Insurrecto by Gina Apostol. And we were able to get Gina Postal in with us on the Zoom call. So it was pretty awesome. Nice. I mean, it was like half. I mean, maybe, maybe a third of it was just us learning about the whole, like, the, the educational blind spots we have when it comes to Philippine history. So the book is about uh, covers the Massacre of Balangiga which happened during the, the Filipino-American War of 1901, like the 19 or something. 19, 19, you know, the early, early turn of the 1900s. So we got like a pretty cool, it was like a combination of a history lecture on colonialism. And then we got like, we were privy to secrets about books, not just interactive, also her other book, The Revolution According to Raimundo Mata. It's just, it's just so interesting to pick apart her brain. And like she was also asking us questions back. I don't know if they were she seemed happy with our with the way with, with the way it was going because she's based in the US. But she's a local author. Oh. It was just it was just a really good time. I had to wake up at eight AM, which is hard, but it was totally worth it. Mm-hmm. It started out with just me and my friend. We were already talking about the book, and so we decided to tweet at Gina Postal. 
that that we were talking about her book and then she offered to drop in. So that's like the one one good thing about having Zoom. Having just all screen time. You could, you like, can, even if some of the yeah, even if some of the members are even if some of the members are abroad already again, we could they could still connect with us. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you have any message to readers in our country or people who might be willing to join a book club? I say just join it. If you could find one, just join. Just if, if you have time, if you've read the book, just join it. it uh, don't feel too nervous about getting saying the right thing because there really isn't the right thing. Sure, they can hurt your feelings if they don't like your favorite books. <laughs> you can defend it. Just, yeah, they, they said they didn't like good. I've been reading Good Omens since I was a kid, and then when I come to book club, they hate it. <laughs> hurt your feelings a little bit, but you, you get to toughen up. Yeah. Oh, I will say one other very positive experience I've had. This was mm-hmm. this was the last book club meeting we had for the BGC in person, and oh. we were reading. Uh, essays, essays on love or essays in love by Alain de Boutouin, like Alain de Boutouin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. French mm-hmm. sounding. Yeah, French. So, so what happened is like one by one, we sit on a table, and we tell we ask them, "Do you like the book?" And we were pretty much evenly split, fifty fifty. The people who love the book really love the book, and me, I hated it. Really hated it. It's just, there was just, there's never been that kind of divide between us so clear. It was just like arguing it over, you know, with friends, good food, and a bit of wine. That's, that's a good, it was a very memorable time. That's great to hear. Mm, how, um, like, okay, this is like advice for also like the other viewers, but how can someone start a book club? When I, not counting which, when it was just me and my Canadian friend. <laughs> uh, for me, and I started the Makati Book Club when, because uh, my friend knew she wanted it, or she wanted it to be a lot closer to where she lives in Makati. And then there was already the meetup group for Mahati Book Club, so we just kind of took it over. Mm-hmm. And start the very first meeting, we just dragged our friends who worked or lived in Makati, who was like willing to read first two short these two short stir- stories by Ursula Le Guin. So for that first meeting, it was just her friends and my friends. So that was my first time trying to moderate. I don't think I'm a good moderator, but it's still, you know, people would want to talk about this because it's a very interesting uh, set of short stories. They, they, they stand on their own. Even if you don't discuss them, it's fi- It's worth reading. But the discussion, having some other people to discuss it with, just brings it to life and it gives it so much more depth. That's so true. Like, even if it's... Yeah, even if it's just short stories, it doesn't even have to be like full novels. Mm-hmm. For people who want to start, it's all about the right people, isn't it? Yeah. Get that friend. That's true. Yeah. Although, like, oh. yeah. Um, don't you like ever get yeah, scared but- though that like some of them won't like come consistently, and then no one would show up? Or, like, you wouldn't know what to do in the next meeting? And, like, how do you plan the... Sorry, this is so many. <laughs> but, like, how do you plan, like, which discussion questions to, like, put out there? Oh, let's see. See, you already voiced a lot of my anxieties about starting a book club. <laughs> but they still happen. Uh-huh. It, like, you book a place for... Like people who RSVP, there are people people who RSVP on the app. They go for like maybe ten RSVPs, but I know from experience that you only want to maybe book for five because those other five other five people aren't gonna show up. Or discussion question, I honest only I only prepare them sometimes. Ooh. 
I actually don't really prepare them. I, I barely, it's, it's very casual. Uh, we did we did prepare some for thicker books, like maybe Americana and Interrupto. But mm -hmm. in total, it's just kind of freeform, what you think about the book. Lots and lots of tangents. Or, you know, for something like American Gods by Neil Gaiman, he does have questions on his website if you look for them. Oh, so um, when the conversation like goes kind of dull or like it dies, you just have to like keep a asking questions, that's all? More or less. I do worry when it comes to Zoom meetings, if especially if the book's lackluster. It turned like book club just turns into a little bit of a monologue time for me, and I'm probably saying the wrong things <laughs> just to keep the just to keep the, the time going. And if it's a good book, which isn't always the case, there will be there will always be something to say about it, good or bad, actually. Mm -hmm. Wait. So you said in the Zoom call you feel this way, but in real life it doesn't really happen like that. Like you don't feel nervous about giving monologues. Nah. The difference between the Zoom clubs and the IRL ones is that in I in the well, if you see them in person, you can always just like usually the tables are. The tables aren't great, and the restaurant acoustics just kind of drown each other out, so it's a lot of yelling across the table. Yeah. So it kind of happens if it's a big group, you just kind of splinter together, like cut yourselves up into smaller groups. Ooh. So there would be like several discussions ongoing at the same time. Compared to Zoom, you don't really know if the internet's working at all, and... Yeah. It's, it's a lot of waiting. You've had online class, you know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, true. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I think in Zoom calls, people like cut each other off a lot. So I think that like the others end up not saying what they had to say because our Zoom call, well, no, at least in my experience in the BGC book club, it, it's timed and it ends at a certain time. Is that like? Because uh, Katrina's uh, Katrina's on a different time zone, so it's it's difficult for her to wake. I don't know what time is it there, so either to wake up or sleep. Anyway, it's different. She's in a different time from us. Yeah. So it's a lot shorter the Zoom calls. You you don't have the other you don't have the energy of other people to really play off. Maybe that's just me as like, that's just how I socialize with other people to begin with, just I like, feed off their energies. Like, I'm not a social vampire, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when you did join book clubs, um, are your friendships with people like really good? Like you guys get deep and close friendships or you guys are like basically acquaintances and you're only like close buds when you're in those meetings for the book clubs? I've made some good friends from it, but in total, uh, I guess it is has has been more of an acquaintance relationship. I'm sure if you really wanted to make friends with someone, you could, if, you know, take it outside. I it's difficult, I think, with Zoom because, you know, there's no sidebars here as much. Yeah. But you can make. You could definitely make a friend or two from it, but don't expect everyone to be like. Oh, it's it's not a barcada thing. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's a place where you can meet people, but they're not necessarily gonna be your friends. So. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know. I have to see I have to think of them as friends. But then again, I am that type of person to think of everyone as friends. Same. And, same. <laughs> um, does your book club have like a Facebook group or something where you guys can like chat and stuff? Because for the BGC book club it doesn't. Yeah, I think I have a good read group, but they don't, they don't, nothing happens on it. Yeah, we, we don't have it either. If you want to really communicate, there's the Meetup app. 
But yeah. uh, in the UP book, the UP book club, they have a Telegram group to discuss it all. Oh wow, cool! Apparently, so there are a lot of different kinds of book clubs, pa. There is my brother's professor. He keeps talking about how she has a she holds a book club at her house, and they all just drink wine. Whoa, wine fancy! <laughs> Kind of dream, yeah. And I know Daniel. He, as a white Australian man, is part of a book club full of, I don't know, house Indian housewives, where they volunteer at museums. Whoa, that's so cool! And like, there's so much. And I. And I don't know what other book clubs, what other book clubs are there out there, but I'm glad they exist. And they, maybe just, they're just being, they're just waiting to be found. True. Um, I think like younger people should join these types of book clubs more. But I don't know. Are they like, are they like rare in your experience? I mean, I have three right now. But for the longest time, I had zero. Whoa. So, before, I don't know how rare they are, or if I just didn't try hard enough to find it. <laughs> yeah, no, how, how do younger people read nowadays? Back, back then, you just kind of read the popular book, Hunger Games. I'm showing my age, but Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then all, all your friends just happen to have read it. And there's, and there's your book club right there. Yeah, yeah. But true. like in the sci- I, I, don't, I was never... I felt left out by not reading Twilight, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're not alone. I have like the whole series because my tita gave it to me, but I haven't read it yet. And I don't know, for some reason, lots of people are, like, bashing Twilight and stuff. But, yeah. But I think younger people don't really, like, join um, the book clubs that are out in the public. Because maybe they're intimidated by the books that are chosen and stuff. I'm not really sure. Because, like, even when I look for, like, Pinoy book clubs in Goodreads, it's normally, like, older people who join and I'm like um oh, okay uh, I am inferior to you wise ones <laughs> that's why I've always been so <laughs> <laughs> you're not inferior is it? if anything you're you're starting out a lot younger you have so many more books to read <laughs> yeah that's... oh but there is a there is a there is a good read book club it's someone in the UP book club. She moderates some meetings there. If you want me to give you her contact. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That would be nice. Apparently, apparently there's a official. Apparently, there's like an official Goodreads book club too, and it's local. Because uh, a lot of our book club is a lot. It's just kind of based off TPC being a lot of our members. We share a lot of members as well. And then I go to the UP book club and kind of really interesting because I don't know how they are in real life. And they themselves saw so at first I thought they were like way more academic type, classroom structure type. But they <laughs> themselves said like, it's, it's not how they usually are as well. It's just kind of how the format has forced them to. They have PowerPoints. They, uh, they have in-person voting systems and they have like Excel yeah. sheets Maybe because they were all econ students, but they all have these Excel sheets on ratings and nominations. That's so extra. They take... <laughs> but they also, I yeah. If, if you're if, if you're the type to like that, it's interesting. It's it's nice to have structure. I compare it to my having almost no structure, very casual. <laughs> I, I feel... casual is better though, because people would be like more chill so they'd open up more and sharing their thoughts or maybe that's just me and how I am that's true but our group in the other book club it's because you're made to answer it that you're like 
come up with quest come up with answers that you wouldn't have just like that that you wouldn't have come up with organically like just by like having no structure so there's bring up do you want to start your own book club oh well my friend does in school she's also a lit major in lasalle but she's like i don't know how to do it i just don't know how it works because i think we both have like this um perception that you have to structure and plan everything out and like make your own discussion questions be some kind of professional in reading <laughs> and you have to be like really smart <laughs> yeah I, I feel constantly insecure during book clubs. Whoa. But you're like the one who talks the most in the VGT book club. I never noticed that. I don't think I do. I actually think I should fix that, actually. Let other people talk. <laughs> I, yeah. I should, honestly. Uh, what I do wonder is like, if, if they're like, especially for younger, more social media savvy people if there's like if, they, if there's a different way to congregate or to find you know your people for book club you could use maybe twitter something oh, did yeah. you see um do you see like now that now that we're all on zoom there i saw this one there are now paid book clubs what like people like steph curry and other yeah there's like this app I just kind of skimmed the article, but I think there's an app, of, and then you could pay to be part of a, I don't even know if it's a live discussion or just a group that discusses it with the celebrity on their choice of books, Whoa. but you could be, you could kind of, it's a subscription-based book club, so they found a way to monetize it. I haven't heard of that, but Wow. So maybe the Instagram account of the BGC book club helps in promoting it, but I'm not really sure how that works. And like on Facebook, they say it's a book club, but there's no actual like discussion with people, and that's just the problem. Man. Yeah, it's a lot of word of mouth. I suppose I suppose going on, or I guess maybe you need to use the right hashtag. If people can find a hookup, they people should be able to find this book club. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's true. Do you think there aren't enough book clubs? Or maybe it's just that we haven't heard of the other book clubs in our country? There can always be more. There's so many books going on. Not all of them are being talked about. Yeah, they deserve a little attention, no matter how small. 